All right, so I know I previously said that I wasn't gonna touch on how to use Illustrator, um, and you just saw me design real quick my design Illustrator, but I think it's only right that I give you guys a little bit so that you don't have to really go elsewhere, at least just to get things rolling. So I'm gonna sort of do a brain dump on uh, all the important tools that I see and use in Illustrator and um, the ones I use the most and how to use them. Um, this will get you up and started just so you can sort of work your way around um, and at least get some basic things done and start playing around. So number one, Black Arrow. And you should see this toolbar at all times, right? Um, I like to keep my Pathfinder align, um, these two, my Pathfinder my align out. If you don't have them out, go ahead over here to Window, get your Pathfinder out. Um, and get your line out, all right? This is very important um, as well. This is more so important, your layers in Photoshop, um, because that's mostly layered based. Um, but in Illustrator, it's not as important. It can be helpful. Um, so get the, keep your layers out. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. I'm, I'm sorry, everything is not pretty self-explanatory. Everything else is pretty much unnecessary um, it can just be a little helpful here and there okay so black arrow this selects things and moves things around so let's get a shape going we'll get our type tool out um, illustrator is great with type okay so I'm gonna get that out now you have these points you can rotate with your black arrow uh, and get get your edit undo shortcut going right away and that's command Z um, on a Mac. If not, check if you're on a Windows and see what this is, um, but edit undo so that the second you make a mistake, you can go right back. And now we want to make this bigger. If we just pull bigger, it's going to stretch and warp. So we're going to always hold shift when we're resizing objects. This will keep things scaled. Okay. So black arrow moves things around, rotates things, get that edit undo at all times just ready. I'll keep you moving around this program real fast. Um, and when you're resizing, hold shift. Okay, now right now this is text. So this is vector based, but it's not outlined. Um, and before we send any of our things to our screen printer, we always want to make sure they're outlined, like I mentioned before. So with text, um, the shortcut is command shift O. Um, and I'm going to undo that real quick. If you um, have trouble with that, you can just come into type and do uh, create outlines before sending anything to your screen printer. Outline all fonts, outline all strokes. So now everything is nice and outlined um, and automatically they will be grouped, which means that these are in a group. So they're separate, all separate shapes, but they're in a group. So if I ungrouped them, you would see now when I click and move, I can just move one at a time. All right. And I'm editing and undoing. I'm command Z every time I move this, it uh, jumps right back. All right. So now these can all move independent of each other because they're ungrouped. If I want to start um, getting them to move together, um, I can either just select them all and move them or I can group them back. Um, silly. They don't always give that to you here. So you can just Apple G. And now you'll notice when I click one, they all get clicked. All right, all get selected. All right, let's move down one to the white arrow. And this is going to help us get in and edit these individual anchor points. Now, this anchor points are the lifeblood of all vector design. Everything has an anchor point. Um, that's how it's able to stay oh, so sharp, right? So these anchor points are extremely important. This is always what you're going to be working with in Illustrator. It's all about these anchors. So white arrow can edit these anchor points individually, whereas black arrow edits the shape as a whole um, and not the anchor points. White arrow gets you in there and edits these anchor points. So this new thing um, that they came out with in Creative Cloud, which is the newest version of Illustrator, are these little rounded edge things. So if you pull that, it sort of rounds that edge for you, which is kind of nice. In the past, they didn't have that. So 
if you if you click on the shape as a whole, all the anchor points get selected, and you pull one of these, they're all going to get rounded. But if you click on the shape, and then you click again on just an individual point, now this is the only one selected, and I can just pull that one individually, right? So white arrow to adjust all these anchor points. Now you'll notice on a curve like this, this anchor point has two handles, and I can adjust this curve by pulling on these handles, right? And when you're in the white arrow, it always pulls both handles. And I can stretch, but it always pulls both handles. So if you only want to pull one handle for certain purposes, um, you're going to come over to the pen tool section, click and hold, and that will open up this menu and grab this little anchor point tool. This will allow you to move one at a time. What this also does is you'll see here, um, if I click this with my white arrow, this does not have any anchor handles like these do on the curve. See this handle? These these don't have any because they don't need any. It's a straight line from here to here, straight line from here to here. So you can actually use this uh, anchor point tool to actually create handles by clicking and then dragging. And that will create these handles, which it previously did not have. Another uh, thing I like to do is when I'm in a certain tool, I will use the button command. So if I'm in black arrow and I hold command, I get a white arrow without actually having to come up here, which is nice. And when I'm in this anchor point tool, I can hold command, I'll get the black arrow, <clears throat> which is also nice. When I'm in white arrow, hold command, I'll get the black arrow. So it just kind of jumps you back to another um, tool that can be helpful without going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All right, so use this to create anchor points and also adjust also remove them like as you just saw right there um, but also adjust single points so how do you make anchor points if there is nothing to outline like this text easy money pen tool this allows you to get your shapes going on your own all right so you just pull and I'm going a little fast you just hit your point pull and this allows you to get anchors and handles going, or if you just click once without dragging, you'll get an anchor without any handles, All right? And, that, and now this fill is just sort of filling. I'm going to remove it for now. So this is your stroke, this is your fill, this is where you're, you can change colors and whatnot. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to make this a full shape, right? So I'm gonna bring this around, maybe a little spike over here. And then when I come back to this point and close it, now this is a shape and I'm going to fill it with this blue color. Okay. Cool. Right. So now let's say I wanted to make a hole in this shape. I mean, one thing that I can do is the eraser tool. I'll click this shape with my black arrow, click get my eraser tool and just sort of make a hole. But that's not always the way we want to go. Cause what if I want my hole to be a star? So I'm going to get the star going. I will click and drag using shift to open that star. Now this is being filled with this same blue color, so I can't notice it. I'll make it uh, gray. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, so now I have these two shapes that are independent from each other. And if I want this sort of to be a hole in this shape, I will select them both by either dragging over both like this or clicking one and clicking the other one while holding shift. So if I click this one without holding shift and I click this, it will just select this. But if I hold shift and click this, now I have them both selected. I will either use this up here, which you can see is two shapes overlapping with a hole in it. Now this gives me a hole and this is one shape or edit undo, or I can right click and make it a compound path. So now this is a the shape in itself and it's actually see-through as you'll notice right here see that's showing through cool now let's put a stroke on here just for fun all right there's no stroke on here so then which means there's no outline sort of I'm gonna make a nice orange outline and as you can see it's sort of thin so we're gonna come up to the stroke area bump that outline up a little bit cool now, like I said before you submit a design, let's say you were happy with this, I want to put this on a t-shirt, you always want to outline your strokes. So object, path, 
and you're going to outline the strokes before sending this anywhere. All right. Now this fill and this stroke are grouped right now. So if I wanted to edit them, I would ungroup them. So now this fill is separate from this stroke. You can see that, right? Um, and those are ungrouped. So maybe I want to pull them apart and do two different things with them. That's fine too, All right? And what that really just allowed me to do is make a stroke off of this and I made a whole other shape, which is kind of cool. Another tool that I like to use a lot is this right here, this Unite. So let's say uh, I'm going to ungroup these real quick because I want to move them around individually. Say I want it to go like this, like this, like this. All right, and now these are all separate shapes. Let's say I wanted them to be one shape. You can see how they're overlapping. Unite, and now they're all one shape, real nice and easy. Now, all right. One other tool that I like to use a lot um, is object path and path, come on, offset path. This is going to create an out like an offset path, different from a stroke. It's going to leave some space and then create um, the shape around it. So if I do preview right here, you can see what I mean. And it's going to be in the same color, but we can go in and change that color. So I'm going to click OK. And this is actually below this shape. I'll show you that when I change this color, All right? So that's a nice, easy way to make an outline without doing a stroke. Because if I was to just, if I had the same shape, all right, here's another quick shortcut, option and drag. See how it brings up those two arrows and that's a, it duplicates it and drags it over. If I was to just put a stroke on this bad boy, um, we'll use this same color. So if I'm in here, and then I bump that stroke up, you can see how it's sort of taking away from the fill. And I'm not able to achieve this same effect. You see that? So doing that object path offset path to this allows me to achieve sort of something different than just throwing a stroke on there. Now another thing I like to do sometimes is, oops, edit undo, keep that edit undo on, on lock, is turn this into a stroke and then bump that up, all right? So now you can sort of start to get the feel of what that can do for you. And then of course, before I send this to my screen printer, object, path, outline stroke. But don't outline your strokes too soon because if you're in the middle of design process and you outline your stroke, it's gonna be a real bitch to come in and if you say you wanted to edit this, now you have to edit both of these points and it just sort of messes everything up. If I left that in a stroke, all I'd have to do is pull this one point out. It keeps everything real nice. So don't, don't outline your strokes too soon. Those are some of my favorite tools, and as you can see, we really didn't even touch this layer section, um, but it can be helpful. Let's say this is like that. You want, actually, you want this line to be below that. Um, you can either adjust them on here. So now you can see this is actually here. This is here. Or you can go like this, right click, and you can arrange, either bring it to front, bring it back, or bring it forward. So if I send this to the back, now it's gonna be the last. So you can do that through layers, or you can also just do that through right clicking and um, arranging them. Okay, that's one thing to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Any other tools, let me think, let me think. I showed you the eraser tool, which can be helpful sometimes. Um, this sometimes I like to use actually, this is just sort of like a brush tool and it turns it into a stroke. So I would sometimes do little cool things like this, right? Now this is all a stroke, so I can still go in and, you know, make this thicker or shorter. Uh, I can come over here and change this up to something like this, you know, and of course I'll always outline that before I send that to my printer. Your eyedropper tool selects this color and throws it in here. Um, I'm pretty sure that's as much as I'm gonna tell you at the moment. Another helpful thing, press spacebar, get this handout, and this allows you to move your canvas around. When you save this thing as a PDF, only what's inside your white canvas area will be saved. All right. 
Let's get on to the next section.